In 1.4 example one, we're going to look at finding the sum of a couple of geometric series. And I'm just going to quickly paste in the two formulas. I really would recommend you have your formula sheet handy when you're working on chapter one. There is a lot of formulas and most of chapter one is just getting you prepared for that kind of standard math formula sheet where you have a lot of extra information and you're looking for the particular piece that applies to the question. So for this question, it wants us to find the sum of the first 10 terms. I'm going to write that the sum of the first 10 terms we write as S10. Now, that's really important that as soon as you write S10, it means that the number of terms you're adding is 10, right? That's the sum of 10 terms. And so for part A, I'm going to identify what I can from the information given to us. I can see that the first term is 4, and I can also determine that the common ratio given by term 3 divided by term 2, just kind of wrote that 12 wrong there, um, or term 2 divided by term 1, I get that the common ratio is three in either of those cases. So I know term one, I know R, I know N, which means technically if I wanted to, I could use either formula. Well, sorry, I lied, that TN we don't have, right? This TN is the real trick that if you don't know the last term, then you cannot use that second equation. So I'm actually just gonna cross it out in red because we are gonna be using the top equation which tells us the sum of n terms is, and maybe I'll just kind of check them off as I'm talking through them. The sum of n terms, sorry, my phone is going. I will be right back. Okay, sorry about that important call. I just got to kind of refine what I was talking about here. So we know the first term, we know the common ratio, and we know the number of terms. So all we're really going to do here is substitute the T1 is equal to four, R is equal to three. And I'm going to write underneath it that N, sorry, marker's not working. Um, is equal to 10. So then what I'm going to do is using the equation that I kind of check marked in blue, or I started to check mark, we have that information. I'm going to say that the sum of 10 terms is equal to term one, which is four, times the common ratio three to the power of 10. And then that negative one is not in the exponent. And that is a very, very common mistake that students make in this chapter, because the general term is term one times R to the power of N minus one. And that one is in the exponent. But we try to make sure that our formula sheets are really clearly showing with different fonts or different sides um, that when we want the, that one to be in the exponent, I usually actually put a bracket around it just to make it all the more clear that it is within. All right, uh, and then the denominator is three minus one, the common ratio minus one. Now I like to clean this up just a little bit. I am going to get that this is equal to four times three to the power of 10, which I'm not gonna to try to do in my head, minus one divided by two. I can do that four divided by two first to make life a little bit easier. And I get that the sum of these 10 terms is two times three to the power of 10 minus one. One of the things that students struggle with this in this within this chapter is that these series or geometric series or sequences for that matter, get real big, real quick. Right, when you're multiplying by three again and again and again, um, it might be helpful to see maybe what the 10th term would be. So really quickly, I just wanna show you that term 10 would be the first term four times three to the power of 10 minus one. I'm just gonna put that into my calculator that when I do that, I get that term 10 is 78,732. And it definitely throws students off that when they, they are using these formulas, they can get some truly, truly large numbers. Um, don't stress about that. Trust the math, assuming that you've done the practice and you will be getting the right answers. So I'm gonna do this piece by piece. I'm gonna say that the sum of 10 terms is two, three to the power of 10 in my calculator is 59,049. I'm gonna subtract one from that. So the sum of these 10 terms is two times 59,048. And what I get is that the sum of these 10 terms is 118,096, which is a very, very large number for a series that starts at four. Um, but that 10th term was 78,732. If you take that number and divide it by three, you get the term before it. So I just want to show you that term nine is 26,000. 244. So it does make sense that we have a sum in the hundred thousands. And it is a little bit of a, you know, a jump of faith or a leap of faith, I should say, that when you're doing these problems, you have to trust that you're doing the math correctly, assuming you've put in that time and practice them. Okay, I ran out of room a little bit here. So I'm just going to steal this onto a new page. B told me that term one was five, the common ratio was one half, and we're looking for the sum of 10 terms. 
And then just to help us see the formulas we're using, I'm just going to resize that a little bit. Okay, so looking at the information given to us, I know term one, I know the common ratio, and because I'm finding the sum of 10 terms, I know that n must be equal to 10. So for this series, I'm going to say that the sum of 10 terms is equal to term one, which is five, times the common ratio, and I'm going to use a bracket for that as one half to the power of 10 minus one, all divided by, again, with a bracket just to show that substitution, one half minus one. Now, there, there's nothing wrong with using 0.5 instead of one half, and maybe I'll write the next line just to see that it's e equivalent. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing I did before, which is to clean it up just a little bit. I'm going to have the, the sum of 10 terms is five times 0 0.5 to the power of 10 minus one divided by, you know, one half is 0 0.5. 0 0.5 minus one is negative 0 0.5. Now, if you have your calculator hand, you could take 5 and divide it by negative 0.5, and I get that the sum of these 10 terms is negative 10 times 0 0.5 to the power of 10 minus 1. Then just like I did before, this is going to look a little ugly on the calculator. I am going to do the inside of that bracket first. So 0 0.5 to the power of 10 minus 1. What I get on my calculator is the inside of that bracket is negative 0 0.9990234. Three seven five. Now, you do not want to just call that negative 0.99 or negative 0.9. Use the unrounded value in your calculator, multiply that by negative 10, and we get that the sum of these 10 terms is 9.9902343375. Typically, when we ask you questions like this, and I'm just going to take a quick hop back. It doesn't tell us how to round it, so we're going to leave that answer as is. Typically, when we give you these questions, we'll tell you to round to the nearest hundredth or the nearest thousandth. If we don't tell you that, it is a good idea to write what that full display on your calculator told you, because that's as accurate as we can do with the technology available to us.